All right, welcome back to part three. Bam. Um, in uh, thus far, what we've seen is some just general concepts built around this um, Marauder uh, Hellbat heavy play. We're we'll favoring tech labs a little bit more than reactors on our barracks, trying to get a lot of those up. And most importantly, we want the mid game to be re really big. We don't want him to get the completed tech thing up where he has like a huge colossus with Archon and Stalker and Immortal and a couple Zealot army. We don't want that. That's bad. We want to try to screw over a Protoss player who builds too many Zealots. And we can do this by attacking a lot in the mid game. And the Hellbats with their beefy health at the front and the Marauders with their quickness and their damage are really the bread and butter of this. Um, what I want to come to is this part in the middle, this segment here. Uh, I'm sure we remember this from part number one, this battle here when Ryung managed to snatch this army up at a good angle and to mostly um, decimate it. <laughs> this is really good. Um, I want to ask the simple question, um, how important, actually I don't even make a simple question, I just I'll just tell you. I'm not going to make it a q and I'm just going to tell you what I wanted to tell you. Why do I have to be all roundabout about it? I can just, I can talk to you. There's no reason I can't. We're friends. Um, it's very easy to view a build order as just what goes on with the buildings when there's certain attacks that are must-haves for them to succeed. So here we're going to see one of those must-haves help the build occur. What about some of these mid-game? Holy shit. What about some of these mid-game engagements that I need to worry about? Liquid Hero has most of his stuff here, with a couple of his stalkers out here. But look at this. This is a nice angle for Ryung on this side. He's able to swing around. He's able to pick the Zealots off, pull back, and get another nice re-arc. And is able to largely overrun this force comfortably. I'm, in fact, going to come back to 1340 just before that. Uh, battle occurred. Actually, might even be closer to 14 minutes. Doink. And I just want to count. Six Marauders. There's another four coming. So I'll just go ahead and say 10 Marauders. And these 19 Marines. And these six Medivacs. Easily able to deal with what is five Zealots right here. The three Sentries. The two Colossus and the 11 Stalker. I just want this to be burned into your mind a little bit, because what we're going to do is we're going to watch a different game where Ryung is unable to step out into the middle of the map. Um, also, I will note that um, um, I will also note that kind of after that battle, Ryung attack, 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 attack. After that, let's 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 watch this fast game. We're going to watch both players' perspectives throughout this, and then we'll take some questions. So Ryung, again, very fortunately, goes Command Center first. No Nexus first from here. So generally, we'd be like, oh yeah, nice spot to be in for Ryung. Hero just insta-snatches up uh, the Expo, puts dudes back into gas, gets a second gas. Skip skipping out on all them gateways. Skipping out on all the end gateway units. Ryung looking very, very nice. This this game hurts to watch. Anyone remember this one? Come on. I don't remember this game. I'm just looking at the chat right now. Okay, I'm just gonna come back to the game. Okay, so fast robo, fast single forge, not a double forge, just a single forge. Starting to add up them gases. Getting them sentries out. Usual push from Hero. Uh, getting some stalkers. This is... Oh, God, this thing's things. Oh, it's the worst. Okay, there's the tech lab coming up. The engineering bay coming up. This marine, marauder, hellbat, medevac mix only functions well in big, wide, spread out open spaces. You'll notice this is virtually identical to what we saw last game on Whirlwind. I should say the part two game on Whirlwind. So here's the moment. This is this is gonna this is gonna hurt you and will hurt your children and your children's children. Okay, so coming up right now, 
Armory, engineering bay, other engineering bay. This factory will soon enough be getting a reactor. Everything is looking good for Ryung. He's even beginning to move out with these marines to pick out observers and to begin putting pressure on. To sit here, to hold this watchtower, to make the Protoss leery of advancing without a pretty significant force. But then, this happens. Alright, here's the tech lab. Alright. And, okay, look at it. 153. And, oh... Hey, where'd my stim go? I can restart the research now. Oh, no! Oh, isn't that a pain in the butt? Oh, rats. Well, darn. Okay, so now we cannot apply that sort of pressure that we wanted to. We really cannot. So the stalker shouldn't be doing that much damage, and yet it is. So heroes we yet again going for Blink, yet again going for this, you know, Colossus-like push. He'll be taking a third behind it. Our Hellbats are coming out. We should actually be out on the middle of the map right now. That's where we should be. So Ryung actually feels so pressured that he's like, crap, I can't move out. See, where the Terran should ideally be is like here, or at the very least like out here. Like this is a perfect angle to engage this army. Remember these numbers we looked at before? I mean, there's a lot of Zealots, but before there were 11 Stalkers. Not the same case here. This army is about equal in size in this game that it was in the Cloud Kingdom game we just watched. There were, uh, there were three more Marauders, and other than that, it was the same force. We even have these two Hellbats out. Ryung should be able to engage this. But he accidentally messed up his stim. So he can't. <laughs> so he's stuck way out back here. A uh, part of me wonders if Ryung was farther forward, if he could have taken this on. But now he's gotten a full warp and round of extra stalkers. If this had engaged the Protoss army here, it would have been a much different story. But then this starts happening. So you heard me say that Force Field is really good against this composition. That's because it messes up the mobility and the ability to surround. So what we're actually going to see is these buildings act like little force fields, and this ridge act like little force fields. We're just gonna see no zealots really going to the front, and the stalkers uh, wailing on things from afar. So this is good. This is rocking. Here we see the zealots go to the front, oh, but they pull back pretty quickly. Hard to get a good engagement in on this. We're just seeing some nice micro go on. Again, all this is happening because Ryung didn't get the stim. Oops. Didn't get the stim that early. And the whole thing that has been caused by this is that there was no ability for Ryung to move out to force more gateway units back home uh, like Zealots to force uh, Protoss back when this first engagement happened. And now we're seeing the real power of force fields and ranged units against this. This is just... Amazing. And amazingly easy for Hero 2. Then Hero just backs off because he feels like he has the edge. Or if you get more zealous, but those will get crunched. And now all of a sudden, Ryung is no longer going for this um, Hellbat style. So that's really the attack that I wanted to focus on. Because I think Hero's clearly... Clearly winning! Clearly. Clearly. Alright. Let's take questions. Uh, yeah, so to recap, in the last two games we saw, we saw Protoss is mainly destroying this by having good positioning, getting them in cramped corners, which is a straight corollary, getting sentries with force field is going to let us destroy these armies. Stalkers are going to become a lot more valuable, even though it seems not to make sense because stalkers aren't that amazing in late game mixes. We're up against someone going Hellbat Marauder. Play stalkers suck is when you're up against Ghost Marauder with a lot of Marines in there, too. Um, you know... The question grabber isn't working, so I'll just draw him directly. From the chat. Alright. 
Tortuga says, Day 9, do you think that a Stargate opening into Robo is a proper deterrent for the Hellbats? I think having a few Oracles and Phoenix can let Protoss get fewer gateway units and pump them Mortals Colossus. I don't think it's much of a deterrent at all, as we saw in the game between uh, Hero and Ryung on Akalon Awakes, where Ryung um, saw that his opponent was going Oracle, and then just straight up went for Mines, and then Marines, and whatnot. I mean, the fact is, if you do go for that air, you have to begin teching into Colossus or Templar. I mean, you must. You can't deal with big armies with just gateway units and stargates. I think. I think, I don't know, mate. I'd have to have to do some exploration, but it sounds implausible. Um, so given that, you can begin doing drops, which will force up that gateway unit, force the delay in tech, and then begin going into Hellbats. So, yeah. Manbon says, would Zealot Archon work well against this kind of composition? Um, I, it, Zealot Templar definitely sucks, like trying to go for the storm. Maybe if you got a lot of Archons and a lot of Zealots and tried to like overwhelm it directly, maybe that could work. But you, you can't you can't be cutesy about it. You know, you can't like Well I'm gonna go for Zealot and Archons and transition back into Colossus. You'd have to like go like seven gate off two base, expand, and then go like thirteen gate, and then begin incorporating into other things. Um Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Philosopher asking a similar question about Immortals against this composition. They're good, but only with a lot of force fields. Alright, let's see here. Uh, Vajur says, Day 9, in those early games, could the Vikings have been more used effectively in the decisive battles? Uh, empirical evidence indicates that in small numbers... Vikings are really not very good um, against Colossus. They're nice when you can one-shot them, but I mean, it's it's better to have the extra medevacs to heal the ground units, so that way you can kill their gateway units and then chase them down. Um, some of the best uh, empirical evidences from this are Marine King Prime. You'll see him in, in early game spots just getting more medevacs. Early mid game, that is. Um, so Furbex is asking about three to four base um, setups and how he's getting crushed. Um, he's trying this style. Okay, so he's going up against this style um, uh, in Masters League. And it seems like if he's up against three to four base Terran Maxes with this army, he gets trashed in a straight engagement. Um, I, I actually think that the way higher, um, like the way higher Colossus and Stalker counts are going to be quite good. I mean, if you get like, um, I mean... Mm. I mean, I would say the ideal in old school play is something like going for a lot of speed zealots with Storm and Colossus and some Stalkers. And then when that army dies, replace it with tons of speed zealots and Archons. Try to crush the front. This is a sort of traditional one. I think what's going to be more common now, or more common against this, is... Colossus Stalker with Sentry as sort of the big core force. Um, and then as it dies to... Probably just replenish Stalkers, actually. Um, I mean, I think it really is going to be a lot more Stalker Sentry based play with a lot more Colossus, like way more. Most of the time, Protoss are stopping at like three or four, but I think it might even go up to like six or so. Just a like, huge one. Because Hellbats are just not, they're going to be irrelevant in that force. People asking about PS4, Xbox One, looking for that controversial thing to put on slash R slash gaming. Even PC players value the blank. 
you know what? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the greatest answer ever. Here it comes. Are you ready? You know what the best console of all time is? The Sega Saturn. Oh god, if you haven't played Guardian Heroes, then your life is fucking awful. Oh, it sucks. Panzer Dragoon Saga. That's the best RPG ever. Panzer Dragoon Saga is so straight up hardcore good. Mmm. Mmm. Think Street Fighter 4 is a good fighting game? Try Last Bronx. Mmm. Ah, oh, yeah. How do you feel about the early Banshee pressure? Um, keep Protoss pinned. Huh. I think the problem with early Banshee play is the fact that Stargate's just crush you. Just like Insta 1-0. Um, and I don't know a way around that. Hmm. Let's assume for a moment that he didn't go Stargate. It did go for Robo. Maybe you can get a Reaper and scout that out. I don't know. That might be pretty good. Um, yeah, you could pin him in his base and you can get the Raven up. I don't know. I just banned this guy in chat and like the entire chat cleared up. He was like 50% of the posts. <laughs> banned. Um, got him. Pew! Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna stop the daily there. I think I think I think I did a good job answering the questions that were asked. I'm not gonna force another one out. Um, I'm trying to get access to some of the WCS finals replays. I'm not gonna announce a topic for tomorrow or um, Thursday because I'd like to do the games from this weekend if possible. But um, on Friday, I'm playing The Last of Us. For this week's Fun Day Monday, please submit to me a game of you rigging the best StarCraft II game you can. Get a friend. Rig the shit out of it. Rig, rig, rig it. Rig it. Rig it. Give me the best rigged game. Submit that to Monday at Day9.tv. Maybe it's an amazing cheese where both of you wind up um, trying to kill each other off and it saves. Uh, you save each other's bases and you rebuild and all that stuff. Yeah, rig a game. Fake it. Fake a game. Rig it. Get a friend together. And like artistically create uh, an awesome game. Maybe with some cool battles. If it's a bad rig, I won't do it. Gotta be a good rig. Mm. A synchronized free-for-all would be great. Alright, I'm done. I'm just gonna play music. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, it's good to be back.